Hi, my name is Buzz, and I'm one of the leaders here at The Wayward Outreach. I am so honored and so privileged uh, to be able to share with you. So congratulations on your journey thus far in this fast. And I want to share a quick testimony or some insight into fasting that I've got on over my 20 years of ministry. So what fasting has done for me is it, and I know it's kind of a cliche and it's, it's a redundant theme, but it gives me clarity. Um, I typically fast at the top of every year so I can hear from God and then to take an honest stock of myself um, to evaluate my strengths and my weaknesses, uh, my successes, and even my failures over the year. And then I just kind of hand them over to God so that He can in turn chart a path for the year for me so that I could become a better Christian, a better disciple, a better parent, and all around be the person that God has created me to be. And so let's just jump into today's um, topic and lesson. It comes out of Matthew chapter 7, uh, verses 1 through 6, and I'll read it for you. It says, Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of the speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye. Hypocrite. First get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. So today I kind of just want to focus on, on the first few verses of this passage because unfortunately this has to be probably one of the most misunderstood um, and misapplied passages in scriptures, not only by unbelievers but by uh, believers alike. And the problem is that people tend to focus on the first or they try to isolate the first passage to the first part of the verse that says, don't judge others. And, and what they try to do is try to interpret that to mean you don't have the right to judge me or to put me on blast or to check me. And Jesus in our text wasn't giving us a blanket statement saying don't judge. Obviously, he's not because the Bible has a book called Judges. And Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians um, 6, 2 and 3, it says, don't you realize that someday we believers will judge the world. And then he goes on to say in verse three, don't you realize that we will judge angels? So Jesus didn't um, or wasn't making some sort of prohibition against judging. But what he was saying in, in our text in Matthew seven is don't judge others until you're prepared uh, to be judged by that same standard. And then when you do judge or you do exercise judgment, Make sure that you do it with humility and not in the spirit of judgmentalism. Now notice that the three verses here, um, that Jesus does expect us to deal with the speck um, in our friend's eye uh, and our brothers and sisters in Christ because he wants us to be able to discern. He wants us to be able to find weakness if there is so that we can help free them from sin or free them um, from whatever they're dealing with so they can walk in freedom. But how can we help someone walk in freedom when we ourselves are not walking in freedom? So Jesus here is zeroing in on, on the problem of hypocrisy and pride. And he compares it to having a giant plank um, in our eye that blinds us to our own mess while we're lasering in on somebody else's shortcoming. And that's pride. And here's what pride does. Pride makes us criticize and judge other people so that we can feel better about ourselves. But humility will always allow us to see ourselves as clearly as we see other people and to be honest in the judgment of not just ourselves, but of them. And that's why Paul tells us in, in Philippians 2 and 3, he says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. And what I get from this as, as we kind of close our fast is I pray that you've, that you've grown um, in your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit's voice and not only just growing as a disciple and, and making disciples, but I pray that he also has developed or will be developing in you um, 
something that's going to give you a periodic self inventory so that you won't fall into the temptation of, of hypocrisy and, and self criticism. David said it like this um, to the Lord in, in Psalm 139. And I pray that we ask the same question. He said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Congratulations. We made it to the end of another fast. I hope that you were encouraged. I hope that you felt growth. I hope that you felt blessed. And I hope that you're tanked up and geared up to begin another year as we grow in Christ.